Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I wanted to make a brief video for you about the history of Sledgehammer Games since they're going to be making the next Call of Duty game. I thought it might be good for those of you to get to know them a little bit and kind of know what to expect from Sledgehammer Games. I'm playing MW3 because this is the last game that they heavily worked on alongside Infinity Ward and in the history part we'll get to that. But I'm going to show you some unusual play styles and very aggressive play styles in the beginning of a couple of matches here. I'm going to edit it a little bit, edit out the boring parts. Uh, my team did a little bit too well. We pushed them back, they camped, whatever. But as I said before, Sledgehammer Games did a lot of work on MW3. The company was founded in 2009 by Glenn Schofield and Michael Condry. I've met Michael. I don't think I have met Glenn yet, but they previously worked at EA. They worked at uh, 007 with Russia from Love, if I'm not mistaken, but their big title, the one that they really got a big name for themselves for, is these guys developed Dead Space. Now, I wouldn't say it would be unfair to give them sole creation for it, but that's usually how they're titled. They're the big players for creating the Dead Space franchise. Eventually, they split off and decided to make their own studio, which was Sledgehammer games. Activision actually purchased them, and they purchased them with the intention of adding a third studio to the Call of Duty cycle, but things went screwball very, very quickly, because at the same time they were purchased, or shortly thereafter, that was when we had the big snafu with Infinity Ward, how their, uh, you know, leadership fractured and split off and became Respawn Entertainment. However, just before that happened, Sledgehammer Games got the time to sit and work on a prototype and develop a new idea for Call of Duty. They were going to be the third studio, they were going to be, they were the creative, they were the artists in the group, and they were going to just kind of throw this oddball idea out there and they spent eight months working on it and they made this game that was a third person action adventure call of duty game it's very unusual it was a big departure from the original being third person mind you and it wasn't as much of a shooter as an adventure game i would like to imagine it is like call of duty drake's fortune something like that but what happened is when infinity ward split up and apparently this was part of the split up adding another studio there was something about royalties but things went sour really really fast, about half of them left to go and form Respawn Entertainment, and we had MW3 woefully unfinished. Well, Activision decided to offer Sledgehammer the opportunity to come in and co-develop the game along with Infinity Ward. It was considered a very high-risk, high-reward gamble for them, because if anything went wrong, the outsourcing studio or the sub-studio or the non-big-name studio would probably get the blame for it, and anything that went right, Infinity Ward would probably get the credit for it, but they went ahead, they decided to do it, go for it. Uh, very high-risk reward but it turned out pretty good for them. They contributed enough to if you look on the cover of your MW3 game, it actually has Sledgehammer Games on there, and they did it in 20 months. A typical game development cycle is between three to five years, you know, so three and some change, maybe four, but MW3 was put together in 20 months, about a year and a half, year and some change, which is really, really fast. They worked together, and it worked out well enough for them that Activision decided to give them their own Call of Duty title to work on. Uh, rumor has it that uh, Sledgehammer Games Games also did some work on Ghost. Ghost was Infinity Ward, Ravensoft, Neversoft, Beachhead. Uh, rumored that uh, Treyarch was involved. There apparently were some big development problems because it had to be published on so many different platforms. Old consoles, new consoles, P PC, uh, a couple of different Wii's and that sort of stuff. But the next game that they're going to be working on has been in development for at least three years. Uh, we've only known about it recently, but they've been developing for a long time. I've told you other videos about Sledgehammer Games showing up at COD Championships, and we didn't really know why they were there. Apparently they were taking notes to work on their next game which when I talk to the either the developers or the production team or anybody about the next game like yeah what do you what do you think about your next game what's it gonna be like you know digging for details so I can make a nice juicy saucy YouTube video about it the word I always get is we really want to show it off and they say it's ambitious how do you would you describe your next game it's ambitious we're shooting for the moon we really want to do something different we are really throwing it out there and I just keep hearing this word ambitious over and over and over again and given the studio history of taking like the big gamble of half developing MW3 and risking being blamed for everything I think this is another high risk high reward gamble for them I I think I see this as kind of a gambler studio they're gonna go big or go home they may go home or they may go big anyway I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you learned something useful if you did don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.